What if you could tame your unruly Excel data without wrestling with pivot tables? Meet GroupBy, a new function that'll do just that. GroupBy will immediately organize your information into meaningful summaries with just a single formula. It's dynamic, updating automatically as your source data changes, ensuring you'll always have the most current insights at your fingertips. Curious how this function can transform your Excel experience? Stick around as we unpack the power of GroupBy and show you how to use it for faster, more insightful data analysis. With the group by function, it just makes creating groupings easier than a pivot table uh, because it automatically refreshes. So what does that mean? Let's say we create a pivot table out of this range of data, A1 to E25, insert pivot table, and let's put the pivot table over here in cell L3, click OK. We'll put uh, gender, and let's put the age. Let's put the age here and we don't need to sum it, we're gonna average it. Click there, click on average, click okay, and here's our average. Very simple pivot table, let's see how group by does this. We'll take type equal, group by, click on that, let's move this down here. Rural fields are going to be the gender, select my gender D1 to D25, comma. What are my values? Well, the values are gonna be the age, so I'll select that, and then comma. What function am I gonna use, comma? And then what function am I gonna use? I'm gonna use average, click on that. And that's all you need right now because the rest of the arguments are in square brackets, meaning they are optional. So close parentheses, press enter, and we've got our average here. Let's say we decide on some crazy number. Let's say the male here is 200, press enter. You'll see that dynamically updated. Whereas I have to go in here in the table, I'll right click it, click refresh, and that's when it updates. So that's the one of the pluses of using the group by function. So if you're doing some easy groupings, usually the group by function would probably be a little bit better. If you're doing a little bit more complex groupings, I would stick with pivot tables, but it's actually kind of nice to have the group by function. And as you can see, there's other arguments in there. Let's kind of explore that. I'm gonna go back here. Instead of average, let's do a count. Let's count the gender. So our values here, let's count our gender here. Select that comma. And instead of average, we're gonna use count. Click that, close parentheses. Press enter, it's gonna be zero because count counts numbers and I needed to use a count A. Let's select that, count A, and you can see it included the header here. So what we can do is we can incorporate the other arguments here, comma, our few headers. Yes, I do have few headers, show it, but don't, in, don't include it as another row there, another grouped row, close parentheses, press enter, and now we've got our gender there, our counts. So one of the things about the header here is you can't change it, right? So I have to, if I click on there and I type gender, we're gonna get an error, control Z to undo. Unlike that one, like the pivot table, if we did the count of gender, I can actually have areas where I can change it. So if I had a count here, I can just cl click on that and then I can just delete that, press enter, and I've got that. So that's one plus of the pivot table as opposed to the group by function. But the group by function is quicker, right? And it gives you dynamic updating. What are some of the other arguments that we can use? Let's check it out. Instead of having male, female, let's delete that. Let's say I want to group by state and gender. And let's, to make it easy, let's select this whole range. And what we want to do is we want to choose some of the columns. So we're going to put this into another function called choose calls, C-H-O-O-S, choose calls. That's gonna be my range here from the group by, that's gonna be that first argument there. And we're gonna choose the columns of this array. All right, we have our tooltip down here that's telling us what array we want, comma. We wanna bring back just the third and fourth columns, all right? One, two, three, state and gender, all right? So put three, you can see column number one down there, comma, and then four. Close parentheses, and then comma, we'll go back into the group by function. What value do we wanna bring back? Let's bring back our average of age again. I'll select that range, comma, and what function? Let's average it out. Double click that, comma, and we also want to have our headers, so we're gonna show our headers here. And that should be okay. Close parentheses, press enter. Now you can see that I've got my state here and then my gender. I can do the same here, right? All I need to do is pull in state first here. Got my count here, but I don't want count. Let's pull in the age here. And let's do average, right? Few settings, average, click OK. Doesn't look as nice as this table, but that's because the design is different. Let's put the report layout, show an outline form. It's a little more clean, but we can do the same here, but there's just extra steps, right?
And so again, we can say that, hey, let's change that back to uh, something more reasonable. Let's make that male 34. And you see it automatically updates here. As opposed to here, this 200 here, you got to right click and then click refresh and then it shows up, right? Now you can also filter here. If we didn't want to so show Arizona, I can just click on that. Deselect Arizona, click OK, Arizona disappears. We can do the same thing here too. What we can do is put a filter here. So let's go back to the formula here. Remove that parentheses. You can see the argument here. We have a filter array here. I'll press comma, 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 filter array. So what's going to be my filter array? It's going to be my state. Select this and make it not equal Arizona. Have to put that in quotes, AZ close quotes, close parentheses, press enter. That's quite a bit more than clicking this and unselecting that box, but that feature is available there for you. Now, one of the things that the group by function is better at than the pivot table is putting text in the value sections. That's not easily accessible. You'd have to go through different ways to writing a little bit of DAX to do that. But you can actually do it in the group by function fairly easily. Let's delete this table, right click delete, and let's do it in the group by function. I'll make it easy and we'll just use state. Select all that, press delete, and let's do our role fields. Let's make state there, comma. For the text, I'll add something that repeats. Let's do city, select on that, press comma. Now you may think that, oh, we have this function here and we have this array to text. Click on that and that might take us there. Close parentheses, and it almost does, right? Because we've got all these text here in the values field. But what if we had something like this? What if we had San Jose show up twice instead of San Francisco? We had San Jose. And you can see here, it happens to show up there twice now. And maybe we don't want that. We want San Jose to show up just once. How do we do that? Well, what we need to do is go in here, and instead of array to text, we need to use something called the Lambda function. What Lambda does, it enables you to write your own function in a way, or your own programming in there. And so it's going to take a parameter or a calculation. Usually the first argument is going to be the parameter. What's the name we're going to give it? I'll just call it T. You can, get, you can call it anything like text, X, whatever. Just call it T here, comma, and it's going to come up with another parameter or calculation. Now we're going to do a calculation. So what we're going to do is use the array to text function again and click on that array to text, double click that. What array do we need? We're gonna call that T back, but we want the unique values of T. So I'll click on that, double click that. And what's our array? Our array is T, all right? That's a, that's the lowercase T, close parentheses, uh, close parentheses again, and we're at back at the Lambda function. Let's close parentheses there. Now we're back at the group by function. Let's close parentheses there, press enter. And now we have our unique values here, San Jose, Los Angeles, San Diego, Oh, we didn't have our headers, so go back here. Let's put in our headers, right? And so we've got our function, field headers, comma, number three, yes, and show. Double click that, close parentheses, press enter, and now we've got our headers there. And we have our text function in there. Couldn't easily be done in a pivot table, but with the group by function, it's not that bad. Thanks for sticking around as we explored the ins and outs of Excel's group by function. As you start your using group by in your own projects, remember the key is to experiment and adapt it to your specific needs. The more you use it, the better you'll get at uncovering valuable patterns in your data. Thanks for joining today. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe for more Excel tips and